In a process as complex as cell division, there are many areas where mistakes can occur. These can cause cancer. That's what we'll discuss in this video. Normal plant and animal cells have a cell cycle control system. Cancer is a disease of this cell cycle. Cancer cells do not respond normally to that cell cycle control system. A cancer cell will just continually go through interphase and cell division over and over without resting. Now there is no single cause or single type of cancer. Instead, cancers are any diseases of the cell cycle control system, which results in uncontrolled cell division. This typically results in a mass of cells, which are not behaving properly. Now, many cells are supposed to stay in the G0 phase until injury or growth require cell division. However, cancer cells do not listen to that message keeping them in G0. Instead, they go through the cell cycle over and over in an uncontrolled manner. There are many proteins which control the cell cycle. Some of these proteins block progression within the cell cycle, whereas others simply hold the cycle until the criteria are met. The genes controlling these proteins can be subject to mutations. And so these tumor suppressor genes or proto-oncogenes, these are the genes that if they get mutated, if they get changed, it may result in a cell dividing in this uncontrolled manner. Cancers are caused by a mutation if you recall, mutations are changes in the genetic material, changes in the DNA. Now it's important to realize that cancers are not passed from one generation to the next, but sometimes there are genes which are more likely to be mutated in some families. So there can be a genetic predisposition to certain types of cancers, but cancer itself is never passed from the parent, parental generation to the offspring. Changes in the DNA for proteins that control the cell cycle can result in cancers. Physical and chemical substances that increase the rate of mistakes in DNA are called mutagens. These can include chemicals in tobacco smoke, they can include things like ultraviolet light. Molecules which increase the risk of cancers are called carcinogens. And I would like to emphasize that these two terms describe the same molecules. If you have molecules which affect the DNA, if you have molecules which interfere with the copying of chromosomes, if you have molecules which increase the rate of mutations, those are also carcinogens. Those are also things that will increase the rates of cancers. Now often cancer cells can form tumors, which are abnormally growing masses of body cells. If a tumor is malignant, It can spread to other parts of the body. Tumors take resources and interfere with the functioning of other tissues. And this is why cancers can be so deadly. 
a tumor grows from a single cancer cell. Those cancer cells can then invade neighboring tissue, and if those cancer cells spread through other parts of the body, tumors can form in those locations as well, interfering with the functioning of those tissues and taking those resources. Cancer treatments can involve surgical removal. However, this is only if the cancer is found early enough and can be accessed through a surgical location. Next, we have radiation therapy. The goal of radiation therapy is to damage and disrupt the DNA of rapidly dividing cells, of which cancer cells are rapidly dividing cells. Unfortunately, there are other types of rapidly dividing cells in our body as well, and so radiation therapy can come with a series of side effects as well. Similar to the next option, which is chemotherapy. The goal of chemotherapy is to use drugs and pharmaceuticals to disrupt cell division, but that often comes with a variety of side effects as well. More recently, immune cell therapies have also become an effective treatment. Our immune system is actually really good at finding and eliminating cancer cells before they become tumors. It's only the cancer cells that somehow evade detection by our immune system that are able to grow into tumors in the first place. If we can train a patient's immune cells to recognize these cancers and eliminate them, that is another effective form of cancer treatment. Now, cancer cells are often grown in culture to study, and a lot of research is done on cancer, but Here's another case where bioethics play a very important role. HeLa cells are a cell line that were obtained from a woman named Henrietta Lacks. This was our first immortal human cell line. And what I mean by that is that these cells are able to grow indefinitely in culture as long as they have prepared nutrients. This is not true for most cultures of human cells. These HeLa cells have led to many scientific discoveries and new medical treatments. Modern medicine is indebted to individuals like Henrietta, whose diseases and cells have allowed for medical progress. Cancer is very difficult to treat, and this means that prevention is so important. Cancer prevention can include lifestyle changes, such as not smoking, exercising adequately, avoiding excessive exposure to the sun, eating a high fiber, low fat diet. And then these last two aren't so much for preventing cancer, but for promoting early detection. So visiting the doctor regularly and performing regular self-examinations. In our final module, we'll be discussing how humans interact with their environment.